Welcome everyone to this act of worship recorded for Sunday the 20th of September 2020. Let us now hear a few verses from the Psalm 145. I will extol you my God and King and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall loud your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous work, I will meditate. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we all belong to your kingdom and we bring our different lives and our different experiences to worship you today, the true and living and powerful God. Amen. Let us now sing our first hymn together, hymn number 455 from Singing in the Faith, All My Hope in God is Founded. Let us pray. Almighty God, your majesty and glory surround us here. We come together to celebrate your presence. We come together to offer you songs of praise and worship. We come to rejoice in your mighty acts and to retell the story of your goodness. The story of your goodness that comes with us throughout history and in our own lives. Forgiving God, 
we don't always know how we got to where we are. We certainly don't always know where we are going. We don't always choose the right path. And we certainly don't always follow it. Most of the time we do not deal well with the struggles of life. And we tend to forgive to give thanks to you for the joys of life either. We don't always think of the effects that our choices cause to others near and far. And so we humbly come to you, declaring that we are selfish, but also saying how much we need your forgiveness. And so, mighty God, reassure us and hold us within your forgiveness. Almighty and forgiving God, we thank you because you enable us to breathe in the power of your forgiveness. And so we ask you that your grace and your goodness lead us on your path as forgiven people. Amen. The Gospel reading for today is uh, taken by the Gospel of Matthew, the chapter 20, the first 16 verses. We are going to hear um, this passage in between the meditation. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labors for his vineyard. After agreeing with the labors for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. Hi mate, my name is Bob the Shark. I am a builder. I am married and have three children. I have been a builder my whole life. People call me Shark because I always make my way. I work hard. I know that I'm good and I'm proud to say that I elbow my way through. Once work is done, I go back home, enjoy a beer with wifey and play with the new Xbox with my children. Man, it was expensive, but hey ho, they are so happy about it and I do work hard. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. Hello, my name is Dar. I am new here. I have arrived after a long and exhausting journey. I am looking for a job. I am married and I have two children. They are the apple of my eye. I am a doctor, but in this moment, every job is good for me if it allows me to send money back to my family. Unfortunately, no one wants to hire me, even if they are looking for builders. There is always someone who is better, speaks better, 
knows the right people. By the time I arrive at a place, there is no work left. I am becoming more and more desperate. What am I going to tell my wife this evening on the phone? I am the only hope. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the lovers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. No, mate, this is not right. This is not how you do business. I am the shark. I work hard and you pay me accordingly. This is how it works. I woke up at 4.30 a.m. in order to be here on time. This is not fair. They think they can show up whenever they want and find a job. And now this, honestly, I cannot even talk. I am so furious. Those layabouts, I can't believe that they have received the same money that I have, but worked only a few hours. That money has my sweat and my name on it. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to, to this last the same as I give to you. In a fair world steered by financial and economic interest, we are encouraged from the very beginning of our lives to invest in our education. Do your best, study hard, walk the extra mile, and one day you will succeed. Do not be a loser, do not be a slacker, or you will be crushed by someone else. Feel entitled to do whatever it takes to get the best job, the best position. Be a shark in a pond of little fish. After all, it is only fair that you get what you deserve. So when life it is not fair with us, we are outraged and we complain as if we were entitled to fairness. However, in today's parable, the landowner is not unfair. He does not underpay or give less than agreed to the first workers. He gives what he has promised to give. The landowner is indeed fair, except that his currency is of a different kind. For him, in fact, it is not important to pay his workers according to the hours they have been working. He pays his workers according to a logic that respects their dignity, enabling them to go home and give food to their family, giving them the hope for a better future. This is the goodness of God a goodness that does not really care about degrees and connection, a goodness that it is so counterintuitive
that we call it grace. A goodness that we have received so many times and yet inexplicably when given to others make us outraged. Dar? Dar? My friend is calling me and yet I cannot move. My eyes are full of tears. My heart is pounding. I was already surprised that the landowner gave me the job without asking or judging the fact that I arrived so late. But this, this, he has paid me 12 times more than I was expected. I can send money home. I can have something decent to eat and even share it with my neighbor. I am so happy that it makes me feel like singing and dancing. I'm going to have a party tonight. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be the first and the first will be the last. Are we envious of God's generosity? Are we still trying to tame God's be God, believing that God will act accordingly to a may the best win faith? Or are we grateful for all the time that God has given us a second chance? For all the times that God has paid us 12 times more, even if we did not even show up. What are we going to do today? Are we going to keep mumbling about the unfairness of life? Or are we going to join our friends celebrating God's generosity? Amen. Let us now join together for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Eternal, ever-living, ever-present God, in the struggles and joys of this day, we pray. We pray for those who are overburdened, weighed down, demoralized, fearful, or desolate because of what life has thrown at them. We pray for those engulfed in pain and anguish, facing illness and death. We pray for those troubled in mind and spirit, who find no peace or calm. We pray for those alone and lonely, without friends or comfort. For those frightened and bewildered, who see no direction or purpose in their lives. Eternal, ever-living God, we ask you to bless them and to bless us. We ask you to enable us to notice, share and rejoice in your goodness. Help us to appreciate all the second chance that you are giving us and help us to share it with others. Help us to be so brave that we can take away of a little, of a little bit of our richness, of our privileges, if this helps others to have a life in dignity and full of hope. We ask you all this prayer in the name of Jesus, our Savior. And we answer to you, 
by saying together the prayer that Jesus has taught us. And please feel free to use whatever version of language you feel more comfortable with. And so we pray by saying, How Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us now sing our final hymn, hymn number 518. Father, hear the prayer we offer. Let us receive our final blessing. Go out from here as workers in God's upside down kingdom, where the last are the first and the first are last, where needs are met in miraculous ways and there is grace enough for all. And may the blessing of God, the love of Jesus Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit surround us and sustain us in the coming days. Amen.